So today we have David McElroy. Everyone calls him Mac because he is the man. He is somebody I met uh, working with our, our warriors and veterans. David McElroy, the Yellow Ribbon Training and Compliance Manager for the Air National Guard, Director of Trail of Honor, Founder of Flags of Honor, and a ghost soldier for those killed in action honor flag honoring our Gold Star families. Mac, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Gurry, for having me. You know, I just love you. This oh, and I love you. This is a man got a heart for America and those who keep her safe. Absolutely. Uh, we have to. You know what we do. So please tell us, you are the founder of the Flags of Honor, and that's why we were talking today. This is September of Suicide Awareness Month. Yes. Why did you get this started? Um, well, the... Our pandemic had a lot to do with uh, starting this. Uh, I've been escorting flags for several years and presenting them to local veterans in conjunction with the Trail of Honor. And when uh, another organization, Run for the Wall, canceled back in March due to the pandemic, uh, subsequently, because the Trail of Honor was formed around Run for the Wall coming through Jackson, Mississippi, uh, met with our board and we voted to cancel the Trail of Honor as well but I knew we were not going to let Memorial Day go by without honoring our fallen. So I pulled in some like-minded folks, some uh, like-minded patriots, we like to call, some great Americans, some veterans, and we started discussing how we were going to do this. And uh, we were going to escort flags around the country from various locations and make sure that we were present in Washington, D.C. and in Marcel, Illinois, at the Middle East Conflicts Wall Memorial. So after getting people on board and having a couple of folks come up with some flags, there needed to be something more than just, hey, here's this flag and this is what we're doing. So I contacted the Lieutenant Governor's Office of Mississippi, uh, the Honorable Delbert Hoseman, and his office flew three American flags over the capital of Mississippi on the 30th of April. I picked those up on the, that afternoon and on the 1st of May, I launched the first mission which is the Never Forget Escort. And I escorted those flags to Melbourne, Florida, where I picked up three additional flags that are also presented at the Trail of Honor. These three additional flags I picked up are the three flags that fly over the, v the Vietnam Traveling Memorial Wall for its entire calendar year. And then those are subsequently, the following year, presented to some of the volunteers and veterans that assist with the Trail of Honor. So I contacted Doc, uh, who brings the wall in, and told him what I wanted to do, and he was absolutely so. Those six flags, uh, out of those, on sunrise, Memorial Day, 25 May 2020, I presented the first flag that was flown over Mississippi at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C. Uh, I placed it with a, a few candles, I touched some names of some of those uh, dear friends of mine whose uh, fathers are on that wall. And I loaded up and I traveled over 700 miles to Illinois to the Middle East Conflicts Mem Wall Memorial in Illinois. And I presented the second flag that was flown over the capital of Mississippi at sunset on Memorial Day. The third flag is our Never Forget flag. And it is a continuing mission. It is what we refer to as our story flag because it's where it began. And the three flags from the Vietnam Traveling Memorial Wall, they also are still with me and they travel with me everywhere I go. And they will be presented to, uh, they'll be presented hopefully this coming, coming year in, in May at the Trail of Honor. Hopefully the pandemic has passed and, uh, we can present those, but until that moment comes, we will continue uh, continue escorting those flags around the country to, to various events. That's just amazing. So do you do this all by yourself? Absolutely not. Uh, we're actually fixing to hit 700 on Flags of Honor escorts, uh, people that are following us. Uh, and we have additional flags that are, that are out there. One of the flags that launched on the 13th of May is the Remembrance flag. And it is currently in Texas being escorted by a uh, army veteran. And she is, uh, she is absolutely wonderful. You'd love her. Uh, her name is Heidi Blue Hansing. 
And she, she was the original guardian of that flag when we launched in California. That flag's got right under 20,000 miles on it of escort. Uh, Alfredo Gogo Gomez is in New Mexico and he is carrying the For the Fallen flag, which also launched on the 13th of May. And he is just under me in mileage. He's right around the 25, 26,000 mile mark on that flag. Wow. And on the 15th of August, like I said, I don't like, I don't want a flag just to start somewhere. So I went and I, I acquired three additional flags, actually four, but one was a secret. Uh, I acquired those and I took them all to the state capitol and I just held them up and took a picture of our capitol dome and I rode about 700 miles that weekend around the state of Mississippi to various veterans memorials. I, I went to the Mississippi Veterans Memorial Cemetery in Newton where my father is actually buried and we, <clears throat> we have a, uh, a Persian Gulf War Memorial that's a living memorial and has pictures and the dates of our heroes, the dates that they fail. Um, so I took them there. I took them to Meridian, Mississippi, which is my hometown, about 100 miles away, and took pictures of all the flags there at the Doughboy World War I Memorial. And from there, I went to the Choctaw Nation in uh, Philadelphia, Mississippi, and took a picture with the Choctaw Warrior Memorial. Uh, from there, I went to Tupelo to a Vietnam replica wall that is fairly new. Uh, it's a a beautiful memorial. It's a, a scaled down version of the Vietnam Memorial Wall in DC. And there's other memorials around uh, that Veterans Memorial Park. From there, I went to the uh, Northeast Mississippi uh, Veterans Memorial Cemetery in Kilmichael and took pictures there at that cemetery and then on to the Yankee 72 Memorial in Itabina, Mississippi. I've got this one thing that whenever I travel, uh, I always like coming home across the Mississippi River in Vicksburg, Mississippi, because there's a train trussle right uh, j runs adjacent to the Mississippi River Bridge on I-20. And atop of that trussle is the most beautiful, gorgeous American flag you will ever see. And it always, it always says, welcome home to me. I'm I've still seen it. 50 miles, 50 miles. I've seen it. And it just did, you know, the other river crossings, they're gorgeous. That's my river. That's my state, but they don't have flags. Uh, and to see that flag, it doesn't matter if it's raining, uh, if it's in the middle of the night, it's lit. Um, if it's middle of the day and it, or if it, there's no wind and it's at rest, seeing that flag, I, I know I'm home. And uh, so from there, I, I sent off, I shipped these flags out to their, their guardians that were patiently some and impatiently others awaiting their their arrival and so they made the, the official launch into mission for those flags uh the first flag was the co talker flag and it is in flagstaff arizona with jerry she is doing <laughs> amazing things she has been uh, i think to four or five states uh she is probably pushing about eight nine thousand miles since she received that flag into august um, so she hadn't had it for a month and it's, uh, it's been on mission. Uh, we've got the freedom flag, which Leif, an army veteran in Southern California has, and he is, he is all over the place. He is, uh, he's, uh, I don't think he's been farther than a hundred miles from his house, but, uh, he is, uh, hitting every memorial that he can find. And he is actually the founder of the Los Angeles Rams military booster club uh mm -hmm. to to support our veterans in the military and uh now i know there's some folks out there that that have issues with football right now but when you look at that side of it Leif never watched football he was a a skater and on his facebook page he says he traded in his skateboard for 50 cal uh he mm -hmm. came home with ptsd and I know he wouldn't mind me saying this. Uh, we've had some long talks about this. Uh, he was close to becoming one of our 22 at one point. And football and professional sports is actually one of the things that helped pull him back to reality to see and hear that anthem being played, to see that flag flying over the stadium. And uh, it just, it, it brought him back to realize and there's, there's a whole lot more to be done. And uh, then in Southern California, we have Miss Mary Cupcake Pittman, who is a Navy daughter. She is a, a family member of the SEAL community and a friend to all. 
she is actually the architect that came up with the sandbox route that runs with Run for the Wall from DC to Illinois, and it's called Wall to Wall. You're going from the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall to the Middle East Conflicts Memorial Wall. And there are wall to wall veterans out there that served in Vietnam and served in Desert. And so it was a tie, a generational tie to get our younger veterans involved in missions like Flags of Honor Escorts, Trail of Honor, Run for the Wall, Run for the Wall Sandbox, uh, just to, if we don't lead the way, then who, who's gonna lead the way? Uh, we, we've gotta be the ones on the front lines doing that, so. So we've what are you all doing to help yourselves not get exhausted and uh, um, <laughs> dip, and I, I'm just caregiver. worried about y'all. So what are you doing to make sure that you guys are okay and safe? I, I have heard that so much. Uh, probably. I know you have. You heard it from me before. Exactly. Um, you know, we we get together on little private chats and calls and we, we vent to each other and, and you know, we, we step away. Yesterday, I... Uh, I stepped away. I was actually going to load up and ride. There's a, there's a, a marker that I want to go see. And, uh, but I've got a, a mission that launches tomorrow we'll, where we're launching a new flag. And then there's a reunion in Kerrville, Texas this weekend. And so yesterday I just, I took off, I propped my feet up. Uh, I watched bones on TV, All <laughs> day long, had me a little binge marathon of bones and, uh, thought about my, over in my closet, I've got my little cocky belt buckle like, like uh, Booth wears. And, uh, you know, I just, I just enjoyed myself yesterday, relaxed a little bit. Of course, we all stay in communication, texting and this, that and the other. But uh, we, we do. We try to take a break and let somebody, you know, have this, that and the other. We uh, I'll send my schedule to everybody and say, hey, look, these are the days I'm going to be extremely active. And that way that lets, lets them know, okay, maybe I can back off a little bit that day, take care of me. and. Uh, you know, the, the mission's still gonna be covered because we don't want, ever want a day to go by that something doesn't happen with one of these flags, uh, that we're not getting the word out. Well, I have an offer to make if you're interested. All right. Um, why don't we create a weekly time for anyone involved with Flags of Honor to be able to touch base for whatever they may need, to celebrate yes. something, to grieve, to laugh, to get strategies to help somebody, I'd be glad to do that at a time that you think is best, a time in a okay. day. All right. You know? Let me get let me get with the guardians and see what we can work out. Do it on Zoom here. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, okay. Um, anything and it, 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 you know, it'd be the the flag Mac hotline. You know. <laughs> well, see, <laughs> we've, have, we've, got, we've got a small one that we do every now and then uh, called the Stupid and Go Go Show. My the what? The, is the what? Stupid, stupid and Go Go Show. <laughs> Uh, my road name is stupid. I've had that name for uh, 20 plus years and uh, I wear it with pride because there's a, you know, there's a good story behind it. And uh, uh, I was given that name by somebody that's very near and dear to me. And uh, so I, I wear it with pride and, and I get told a lot that uh, I, I don't live up to that name. But uh, I would never think of you as stupid. In fact, I, you have often reminded me of Booth in uh, Bones. <laughs> So you, you two are, you know, very much alike. And um, although I don't think you wear the crazy socks, do you? I do. I you do? do? You're still wearing them? I Good. I, I wear them with my Converse, my black uh, okay. high top Chuck Taylors. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> yes. I'm glad. Well, let's talk about the flag you're launching tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow, uh, a small handful of folks are uh, going to meet up in the morning early and we are going to ride our bikes and the weather's not looking good, but we're still going to make this mission happen. Uh, as we've already mentioned, September is suicide awareness month. Um, and we're losing the number that, that is out there and utilized is 22 a day. We're losing 22 veterans a day to suicide. And we don't like to use the term commit suicide. We like to use the term, they succumb to their unseen injuries. Uh, because nobody commits to suicide, but they do have battles that are unseen and wounds that are unseen. So tomorrow being the 22nd of the month, the 22nd of the month that is Suicide Awareness Month, we decided that it was the most appropriate time to launch the flag for 22. And so we're going over to Birmingham, Alabama, where interstate- where? Uh, we're meeting in Jackson, Mississippi. 
Uh, is there a particular place you want to tell everyone so they can join y'all or not? No, this is this is going to be a closed route. A closed uh, ride, okay. A, it's, it's a recon for a big ride next year. We're hoping okay. to bring three, four, five states in next year for a huge ride. So we've just got a handful of uh, handful of riders that are going to recon that route. Uh, of those riders, uh, you know, I was thinking about it at a ceremony Saturday afternoon. I'm a I'm a Desert Storm and I rack vet. Uh, I've dealt with my own issues, uh, some service connected. Well, let me back up. Some directly connected to my military service. And one of the things that I wanted to point out today and with you is uh, that it doesn't have to be downrange all the time uh, that affects the service member and affects the family. It's the the schools. It's the you know, just being gone, uh, not necessarily in harm's way, not in a in a area of operation or a combat zone, but the separation that military families have to endure on a regular basis. Uh, some, you know, six, nine months a year, every year, depending on what their job is. Uh, you know, that's hard on anybody. Uh, then you add in the, the mix of, you don't know if you're going to see that loved one again, or the service member not knowing if you know they're going to make it make it through this one or make it through this time uh seeing their buddies fall there's so many different aspects to ptsd and what is service connected uh based on each individual but i'll be leading this ride with a, a very dear friend of mine uh roger barrett who is a vietnam veteran and he is the head the state captain for our Patriot Guard riders. So me and him will be leading a pack of just a couple more riders. One, Mr. Dan Johnson, who is a gold star father. He is the father of Justin Johnson, who was one of our 22. Uh, he's riding with us uh, tomorrow. Uh, William Vaughn, he, he is a gold star brother. He, his brother was killed in Vietnam and he is uh, a, a great guy and you know he's he's going to ride with us uh justin mowdy is one of our pgr riders he is a marine uh wonderful guy he's coming over gonna gonna participate in this and then we have alan smith who is prior army and a year and a half ago actually let me back up two years ago we uh repatriated and had a service for his great uncle who was had been missing in action from the Bataan Death March in World War II. And so they, his remains were finally repatriated and brought home to rest on American soil. Wow. The, the kicker on this is he's got another great uncle that's still missing in action from the Bataan Death March. So he, his family lost two family members uh, on the Bataan Death March during World War II. So Everybody that's riding is riding for a reason. And we're going to scout out Interstate 22 from Birmingham, Alabama, up to Olive Branch, Mississippi. It runs about 210 or so miles. And of course, we'll stop and take some pictures at the Interstate 22 sign, uh, the exit 22s, the mile marker 22s as we come across them. That's one of the things that Flags of Honor Escorts has been trying to get people to do is when you see a mile marker 22 or some people have actually taken pictures of gas pumps with a 22 on it uh, at larger service stations. But anything that has that 22 on it that we post out there, somebody's gonna see it and ask, what's the deal with the 22? And, you know, that just opens up an avenue of communication so that we can inform and make people aware of the suffering that our service members are going through on a day-to-day -day basis and how many we're losing every day. But talking what, about, do you, you know, what do you need? Anyone who sees this, anyone who reads about you or sees pictures, how can we all be a part of this movement what, to save uh, lives? The, the, the first thing I would suggest is to start following, if you're into social media, if you're on Facebook, start following organizations like Ride for 22, Mission 22, Flags of Honor Escorts, Run for the Wall, Run for the Wall Sandbox. Follow those organizations. Uh, listen to the stories. What, what we say when we do a toast, and uh, 
you know, we tend to toast a, a good bit, especially if there's a, you know, a, a day that rolls around that one of us knows someone that was lost or, you know, we see somebody that posts something about their son or their cousin or brother or, you know, we'll get together and we'll do a, uh, a, a little stupid and go-go show live on, on, on Facebook. And, you know, we'll, we'll say their names, tell their stories. And uh, one of the things that we say is to live in the memory of those we leave behind is truly to never die. And so we, we keep those memories alive uh, and we say a toast. And, and when we do, uh, you know, we've had a lot of people ask, it's funny when you, when you do things and you get people paying attention and get people watching, they start asking those questions that maybe I don't know how to start the conversation, uh, but the things that we're doing gets them to ask the question and the conversation takes a life of its own from there. But when we toast, uh, a good friend of ours explained this to us a while back that, you know, the, a toast has all the different, different senses. Uh, you can, you can feel it when you're holding it in your hand. Uh, you can taste it, you can smell it. Uh, the one thing that you can't hear in a toast is, or the one thing you don't have is the sound. And so that's why we make a toast. That's why we clank glasses. And, and people will notice when we do it via Facebook or even when if myself and others are face to face, we will toast, we will click our glasses, our bottles, whatever we happen to have at that time. And it doesn't have, we're not talking alcohol. It can be water. It can be a beer if you want it, whatever. But after we've clicked glasses with everybody in the circle, we always tap it on the table. And that's, uh, that's for those that aren't with us. And, uh, and we, our last thing is never forget. I think that's a powerful message. So what, what is your group recommending? Let's say I'm worried about someone, you know, people call me all the time. Uh, veterans call me all the time and sometimes people who are in the uh, guard and reserve call me and they're worried about someone or they themselves are suicidal. What are you recommending someone who loves someone who might be a 22? How do they start um, that conversation? You know, that's probably one of the hardest conversations to actually start. It is. Uh, because you don't want, and, and that's one of the stigmas about this whole thing, about the PTSD and about mental health in general, uh, there's always been a stigma, stigma within the military community that if you have mental health issues, then you're not fit to fight. Uh, you, you suddenly are not, you're not one of the guys, you, it, you know, it, it was a stigma of being weaker, but it's not about weakness. Everybody, everybody adapts differently. Everybody handles things differently. Uh, what I recommend is if you've got a buddy out there, and this is the only side that I can really speak from, uh, that's why we've got you and others like you is to cover the other side. But from the veteran side, reach out to your buddies. Uh, watch them, listen to them, you know, watch what they're posting. I'm not saying spy on people. I'm just saying if you've got concern with one of your buddies, send them a text message, pick up the phone, call them, drive across town, or, or hell, drive across the country and talk to them. I see posts all the time that, hey, we got a veteran in need in such and such area of such and such state. Is there anybody there that can go and talk to this guy? So and, they drive across town, what do they say? Uh, number one is you're loved and we need you. Uh, we got your back, we got your six. Uh, you know, our stories aren't, aren't over. Uh, We've we got a lot to do. Some of the chaplains and psych, um, psychologists and psychiatrists also suggest that it's important to say, are you thinking about killing yourself? And ask the question directly. Right. And practice asking that. Right. And then, then what? So let's say they say yes. What are you saying to do? Oh, you got me on the spot now. I do, uh, sir, but if not, I'll fill it in. I'm a, uh, my first thing probably is I'm going to wrap my arms around, around that brother or that sister. And, uh, I'm gonna let them know that no, not, not on my watch. Uh, and, and I'm just going to start that dialogue about, you know, what, what it is that is weighing on them so hard. You know, is it, 
is it one particular moment? Is it a culmination of moments? Uh, is it, you know, try to try to scratch the surface a little bit on, is it survivor's guilt? Is it the, th you know, the things that you've seen, you know, and it may not, it may not have a direct relation to military service, uh, what they're going through at that very moment. But, but uh, you know, the important thing is to, is to find out, you know, what that, that bottom line is what is that what is that thing that has got a grip on them that they're struggling with every day and and you know in in the best way that i can let them know that they're loved let them know that i'm here for them and 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 get them to to a professional to get them any help that they they require that's right and make sure that they're not alone absolutely Support them to get some help uh really listen I think diminishing what they're feeling, um, you know, not to do that. Don't argue, no. don't blame, don't diminish. Just it's listen. their story. And, it's their story. And it's very hard to listen to someone's story that we rail against. Right. And they say, I mean, maybe they made a mistake and so they're full of shame or regret. So who doesn't make a mistake? Absolutely. So what do you do about it? Uh, maybe they feel betrayed by someone, whatever it is, to not diminish it. So in terms of hotlines, um, Yellow Ribbon had always recommended 800-273-TALK, and Military One Source has that. Right. I'm going to be putting a lot of the resources together and make sure that you have access to that. Perfect. I'll put it on your, on your Facebook um, uh, page and group, and I'll put it on my website, and I'll give it to you to put on your website. You let me know, and we can make sure all those resources, including the dialogue, how to start that conversation. Right. You know? Perfect. That, that's, that's what we need. You know, that's, the, yeah. and that's the key. Uh, that right there is the starting point. And if you don't have a starting point, the next thing you know, you find yourself looking backwards at somebody that's not with us anymore. So if someone kills himself and I know them, is it my fault? Uh, no, there is, it, it's not our fault. Uh, you know, are we going to feel the guilt? Absolutely. Uh, are we going to question ourselves? Um, you know, had I picked up that phone, had I, had I gone and visited, but we, we can't take, in my opinion, we can't take that blame on our shoulders, but on the flip side of it, if we do everything that we can do, uh, to reach out and to let everybody know that, you know, stick to your training and our training is to never leave a brother or sister behind to always have their six. And so as long as we stick to our training, uh, we'll be making those contacts. We'll be, we'll be touching, touching these individuals before it gets to that point. But no, we can't, we can't blame ourselves when somebody, somebody succumbs to their unseen wounds because it's their story and they may not tell their story. There are folks that have, have, have taken their own life that were planning trips the day before, that were happy, they were laughing and carrying on. And, uh, you know, it just, you never know what the, what the kicker's gonna be. You never know. And so, <laughs> the morning signs, you already mentioned some. You know, what are they posting um, on Facebook? What are they saying? Uh, you know, are some of the, more? some of the things that they, uh, some of the things that they, they you know, hammered in us, uh, the military was, uh, you know, to watch them if they, if they start, if you see a big mood swing or a big change in their personality where, you know, used to be, they were really outgoing and now they're, they are quiet and sort of staying away from the crowd. Uh, if they're, you know, giving away their possessions, if they're starting to, to, you know, give things to people that are close to them that we know were very important items in their life or their history or their story. Um, you know, posting, you know, simple thing is, and I, and we've got a, we've got a friend who is a gold star mother and she's dealing very hard with the loss of her son. And, uh, she posts on a regular basis, uh, you know, prayers and, and comments that I, I can't take it anymore. Uh, I just, I don't want to go through another day without my son. And, you know, we, we have a, a, a circle that 
you know, tries to reach out and stay in contact. And we know she's hurting. We know she's struggling. But, you know, from from all the way across the country, you know, some of the time all you can do is just show that support and let them know that there's somebody out there that cares. I think that is the number one thing. I think you hit it, you know, perfectly. Let someone know that they have a connection. They're not alone. And, and that their story is not only not done, but they can be of service still. Absolutely. Um, to help others. Uh, the reason I asked the question about if someone dies, is it our fault, is because that is something that's been circling the false news for a long time in the military community. That somehow right. it was my fault, I didn't notice it, I, I wasn't there for them, etc. And I think that that just adds to the problem. Um, we each make up our own minds. The problem is when people are hurting, they're often not making choices that are in their full awareness right, right. and right. so that's one of the issues there that's interesting we I, we did a mission this summer and uh we had recognized a gold star family that was actually a 22 and uh between that stop and our next stop uh one of the guys riding with us and i'm not gonna you know give out any names or details but this guy um, separated from the pack and thank goodness he was with somebody else but he had a friend who had taken his own life and they were planning like I said they were planning a trip together they had just talked the day before and he stopped on the side of the road and I don't know if you're familiar if you have them in your area but the uh, the cell phone towers that are in the shape of a cross yes when you the big towers on the side of the road um, he saw that that cross and pulled over and and we'll just say he lost his composure a little bit that it really struck home about his friend and just what you're saying the guilt of what could i have done why didn't i see it and uh it was something that he had not dealt with something that he didn't have the answers to and he'll never have all the answers uh you know when somebody leaves us in that way they take those answers with them most of the time yes um, yeah. So as a result of this visit and this ride and this moment on the side of the highway, um, and, and my, my old buddy Gogo was there with him, thank goodness that, you know, we had somebody that was there to, to talk to him and he was not thinking about doing anything to himself. He was just dealing with that guilt. And uh, from that, he has gone on and he is, uh, he is doing some wonderful things on getting the awareness out there uh good i'm not gonna say he's accepted what has happened because we we never really accept it uh we'll grieve for it you know until the day that that the lord calls us home uh but he's come to terms with it a little bit better and realizes that uh he can't do anything to save his friend that's not here anymore but he might be able to to save another friend or somebody else's friend that is still here and still struggling that's right and he can save it in in the name of that absolutely. friend and also of the 22 absolutely i think the whole point is to uh give these um silent wound sufferers a voice absolutely i am just so proud of you you do such a good job i can't i i i well up with with pride at what you're doing for our warriors you know that um i came to this country as a refugee from cuba Yes. And so when I ever see the flag, um, this is a flag I got in middle school when I became a citizen and I wear it with pride. Um, every time I, I see a flag, I think of freedom. And when I think of freedom, I think of the sacrifice of all the warriors and their families. Yes. You the know, families. So are family members ever considered part of that 22 or is that uh, a different statistic? That, that would be a different statistic. Uh, they, they probably should be uh and there, there may be a department of defense statistic out there that I'm, is, I'm actually i'm researching it it's hard okay. to find some statistics but i'm researching right. that but the and 22 I'm, are strictly service members that we're referring to all right and is that um uh the ones that they're all veterans then they're, they're um, 22 are all veterans yes uh they're they're across all branches uh in all statuses guard reserve active duty um it encompasses if you are a dod resource then uh 
you're you're captured in those numbers. And uh, me and me and my buddy Roger, that's riding with us tomorrow, we're talking uh, last week on those numbers, and that uh, you know we wonder what it really is because there's so many out there that you know what was it what World War Two, Korea, Vietnam, you know we weren't tracking those kind of statistics, um, and just you know wondering you know how many have have gone gone that way that. You know, it's just sort of loss of words here. Well, there was a, on TED Talk, there's a Charles P. Smith who talks about um, suicide. And um, there are a lot of interesting TED Talks out there. And one of the things they were talking about is that many of the 22 actually come from the Vietnam era. Mm -hmm. Yes. From the veterans of that. So. It's, it's interesting. I, I, I. I think we have room for improvement. And oh, absolutely. One of the things I know is that the Department of Defense and the um, Veterans Administration are doing a better job of sharing databases. Yes. Um, I think uh, people get stuck in that transition from, from warrior to veteran and often don't get the care and attention and understanding that they need. Right. I think also as a society, we need to do a better job of greet veterans, returning veterans with love and support and joy yes. and gratitude and all that. And I don't, I, I don't think we do a consistent job at that. We can do better. We definitely can. We yeah. definitely can. So if there's one thing you want us all to think about for tomorrow's ride or maybe do, what's one thing we can all do? Cause we're not going to be riding with you, but we're going to be virtually um, at your back, right? We've got your six. So what can we do, sir? Well, for tomorrow's ride, we have partnered up with uh, Ride for 22, and they are allowing us to utilize some of their placards uh, that remember some of our fallen. Uh, this this uh, young airman right here is uh, Zachary Barton. Uh, family called him Charlie. Uh, I met his family this past summer on a mission, and so I have worn his bracelet uh, since then. And so tomorrow I'm going to be riding for Zachary. Uh, and I'm going to be riding for his, mo his mom and his dad and his family. But, uh, what I could say is, uh, you know, if you know someone post their picture, say their name tomorrow. Uh, if you're out and about and you see a, a 22, a mile marker, an exit, a street name, uh, whatever, take a picture of it, post it, and just, you can simply put never forget. Uh, 22 a day, 22 too many. Uh, say their names, tell their stories, and uh, never forget. But uh, just just remember our 22. Pick up the phone tomorrow and call someone that you know in the military and say thank you. Tell them you love them. Tell them you appreciate your freedom and you know that it came on, upon their service. And sacrifice. Absolutely. I think that's a lovely thing. And then one last thing. Can we donate money? How can we, we help are, with this cause? We are working on Flags of Honor escorts, getting our nonprofit status up and going and recognized. Uh, right now, we are uh, everybody that's running these missions are running them out of pocket. Uh, and we're doing so because we believe in the mission. Uh, you know, there's no no price that you can put on, you know, saving one life, bringing the awareness to uh, the person that may be the one that saves a life. And, you know, those are the kind of things that you can never really track those numbers. Uh, but we know uh, we're doing frozen. good. Could you say that last part again? Um, uh, you froze. That we, there's no real way to track those numbers and the impact that you have. But we know we're having an impact because we see people that, we're not aware of the 22. Uh, we see people, and Flags of Honor is not just focused on the 22. Um, oh. I will I will provide you our our logo, and it has it has 22 first, and it's 22 in red. And the reason it comes first on our logo is because those are the ones that we can touch right now. Those are the ones that we can have an impact on their life. Yes. Um, then uh then we've got our wounded in action, which could easily 
move to the left and become one of the 22, depending on their wounds, depending on the support they have uh, now that they're back home. Uh, we have our POWs and our MIAs listed next. And the last category that we have listed, and they're listed last, not because of importance, but because of the finality of it. And those are the ones that, that laid their life down on the battlefield for our freedoms. And so we are, we are here to support our Gold Star families, uh, our Gold Star, and when we say families, we're not talking about Gold Star mothers, we're talking about families. We're talking about moms, dads, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, cousins, the whole family's impacted. Grandmothers. Uh, grandmothers, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, you know, we're not singling out any one organization and our intention is never to stand alone as an organization. Our intent is to be sort of a glue that, that bonds like-minded organizations together, that connects resources uh, and, and brings awareness to all of these like-minded patriots and these great Americans, these veterans that are doing wonderful things in our veteran community. We've got organizations in every state and you know, sometimes those uh, issues cross state lines and we need to make sure all of those are connected. So that's, that's our number one goal right now is to get those organizations connected and get the awareness out there. So if we wanna donate time, money, talents, what do you suggest we do? Let's talk about time and talent first. Well, we then. know your talents. You are, you are a wonderful open heart and open mm -hmm. ear that, uh, you know, we've had we've had many a many a late night talk uh, about this guy right here. <laughs> Always honored and <laughs> but, delighted. Uh, you know, uh, money doesn't solve all the problems. Uh, like I said, if if you want to get involved, uh, I'll tell you one thing: people didn't weren't aware of red shirt Fridays. Uh, People ask us why we wear red on Friday. Well, we remember everybody deployed. Uh, and so Friday's red shirt Friday day and everybody wear red on Friday. And when somebody, you know, sees a, a logo on your shirt possibly or ask you why you wear red every Friday or, you know, a great conversation starter saying, hey, tomorrow's Friday, why don't you wear red with me? And if they ask why, then you can educate them and tell them we got, we got men and women in harm's way that are deployed away from their families, off their soil, and uh, in a foreign land. And we're gonna wear red every Friday to remember them until they all come home. Uh, so, you know, that's one thing you can do. Uh, pick up the phone and call a veteran. You know, it, it may be a Vietnam veteran or a Korean veteran that you go to church with. Maybe you went to high school with them. Maybe you haven't been in contact. Make that phone call. Just pick up the phone, call, and let them know that, you know, you, they're in your heart, they're on your mind, and, uh, you know, that goes a long way. It does. So then the issue of money, if we want to donate money, you know I want to find ways for people to support you all. I yes. know you don't have your nonprofit status yet, but, you know, how can people help pay for gas, uh, pay for hotels, pay for keeping those motorcycles running, for paying for flags? What can people do to sponsor y'all? I'm going to have to get back with you on that one. Well, I just, I will and let me just tell you, one, we'll of my biggest, a second meeting. one of my biggest faults is asking for money. Well, you don't uh, have to do that. You can get someone else who does that. I know. Um, we're Mac, working you on don't it. have to be good at everything. Exactly. <laughs> and I think and you're not. not. There's two things you really stink at. Asking for money and accepting compliments. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I won't, I won't burden you with either. <laughs> <laughs> I will get you an answer on that. We will work something out and, and figure it out. Uh, and let me know how I can help. I have ideas on the website. Absolutely. absolutely. All right. Cause I think that one of the things I think this, this, as this country is not quite pushing uh, play yet from the COVID right. we're all at home. We've got time and energy, even people who are working, it's a different world. I want to know how people can help preserve their lives by honoring the flags of honor, whether it's the 22 or the, you know, the, the, you know, wh whichever of the flags that you have, it would be so nice to know that they have the sense of purpose. 
Oh. And people uh, pi buy a $50 cup of coffee. They right. may as well donate money on right. the regular or even just $2, whatever they have um, yeah. for the Flags of Honor. And I'm, I'm going to actually put that on my website for people to donate and I'll give it to you. All right. Because, and I think you should have everyone do that. And then once you have a place, a link where we can donate directly to y'all, we can do that. But you know, through Zelle or other online things, people can donate if there's a place for it to go. Right, right. We'll talk. Let's see if I can help you find a way to, to get some money. I do not believe that you all um, in the Flags of Honor have to sacrifice everything in order to make a point. Right. In fact, I think about longevity, we must take care of ourselves. Yes. We sleep right, eat right, get lots of love and care, uh, keep our sense of humor going, correct? Yes, absolutely. Sense of meaning everyone has. Yes. But sometimes uh, war memories cloud that sense of meaning because um, people beat themselves up about what wasn't or what was, right? Right. And, and so when, um, we go when we go live, we typically, uh, We'll throw that disclaimer out there that some of the time what we find humorous, other people may not. They That's may, true. may view it as a little bit sick or twisted, or yes. I can't believe they, they laughed at that. Gallows because, uh, humor, right. Some, some of the time, that's the only way that you know to cope uh, is it to is. be able to laugh at it. It, it is absolutely the only way for, for any group, you know, right. whatever, regardless of what they're doing. Right. We all cope in our own way and humor, as, as long as not unkind, um, right. humor is a very healing factor. Right. All right. So I am delighted that you took the time. I know you're busy as all get out. But Mac, I love you. Our I love you too. And to thank you. thank you for coming on board. You know, I, anything you need, um, I will even ask for money for you. Um, <laughs> Let maybe grandmas for the flags of honor or whatever. I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of things all of us in this nation can do to help. Even maybe our rear ends are in a, in a Zoom chair yes. uh, rather than on the back of a bike. Yes, ma'am. But if you do one near Michigan, I'll join. All right. If you got, I, I, I don't ride a bike. I mean, no, I don't drive the bike anymore, but I could be glad to be the bee on the back. So Yes, ma'am. All right, you <laughs> let me know. We'll do it. Uh, Godspeed to you all. Thank you. And um, I know our nation is grateful. I know I am. Thank you. Love you. Love you, Mac. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, I'm going to stop the video.